Kori Robotic Need How to Start the Robotic System for the Beginners in Initial? So, it's a live demo, Kori Robotic Surgical Demonstration. The pre op protein pre op workup scanogram. So, initially, the first knee marking exposure. Once the painting and draping is done, you need to assess the knee, flex the knee, auto position 90 or more than 90, mark the petala with a marker. Tibial tubercle. Use two fingers down the tibial tubercle for the extra metal tibial pins. Again, two fingers supra petala. So these pins has to come away from the joint so that it does not come within the joint. Minimal exposure. You have seen the exposure. Very minimal medial release. Remove all the osteophytes. This is a surface mapping technology assisted Cori system robotic. You need to remove the all the osteophytes around the joint, both femur and tibia, what all you see, both the lateral meniscus and the ACL and the medial meniscus has to be removed. If your CR the design, you can retain the cruciate, posterior cruciate. So you can see the knee is completely worn out. Take out the medial meniscus. What all the extent you can see. Minimal exposure, remove the osteophytes, remove the meniscus, remove the ACL. Very important is pin placement. First, we do the tibia, extend the leg. Since we have done the knee marking, so in this video, I am using tibial pin first, use the tibial sleeve pin guide sleeve, make the impression, use 11 blade to get the soft tissue away. Use the straight scissors to open it out the soft tissues. I use a small sleeve, custom made sleeve 3.2. So these pins are 3.2 sleeves. Keep the sleeve in place. I am using a 3.2 pin 3.2 pin you see it gets the sound other quarters get purchase similarly 3.2 in a wire collet drilling the near cortex you can make get the sound tone change when it goes to the far cortex you can see this yes yeah this is what bicortical purchase not transcortical i'm leaving the sleeve guide inside similarly femoral pin placement use a sleeve flex the knee use a sleeve for the marking the pin placement again the lemon blade goes straight to the femur here I use again a 3.2 femoral sleeve guide. So I'm going to leave the guide in place. <coughs> Make sure use a finger and see whether the guide is on the femur. Initial cases you can do that and similar way put the pins. On flexion, make sure both the trackers <coughs> facing towards the camera. So second important thing is camera tracking. In extension, rotate the limb. In flexion, rotate the limb. Do the hip center. This is a mocking of tracking. <clears throat> so you see all the movements before tightening the trackers to the clamp. Use checkpoint always, both femur and tibia. When the knee is flexed, you have to see this picture of the tracking. Camera orientation adjustment. See the probe, it should be center. This is very important for any robotic surgery. So all the, now use the femoral checkpoint, define the tibial checkpoint. So medial malleolus, keep the index finger and register the medial malleolus. You can see this against the probe, hold it, 
with the thumb you can hold the lateral malleolus knee center on tibia and femur center you can see my knee is flexed to 90 petal is subluxated i do all the moves so very important hips calibration your colleague to hold the pelvis if you see only my left i'm doing a mock surgery i'm not doing anything pressing the foot pedal so define the hip center you see this i'm just going to move only my left hand only left hand holding the thigh to get the femur you need only the femoral movement so you can see i'm just getting the only the femur once you're done with this femur mapping keep the knee in center just get the outer border and get back to the center and remove the foot pedal okay you can see the blue one these are crucial zones you need to map the crucial zones yeah very important okay so use the green points so that you can I'm trying to cover all Now I'm going to add to the strap. Understood? The blue is mandatory, yeah? You have to print it. Okay. Blue is mandatory. Blue is mandatory. Femoral special points, very important. Use the pink points on the cortex, anterior cortex. Second, both the epicondylar axis points for the rough guidance. Surgical epicondyl. Third, you map the normal cartilage. This helps you in planning. So what you do is, lateral side is normal in varus knee. You map the lateral cartilage entire condyle with the pink points. So this will help you in planning. Then map the trochlea with the pink points. Define the PCA. Femoral axis definition. If a condyles are normal posterior, use the PC as a reference. Similarly, TBL mapping. Okay, again center. Okay, I'm mapping this. So put the green dots no? So this is a blue is a mandatory one. So let me stop running. Surface matching to the condense. So implant planning screen, you can see the yellow working window. So the first screen after robotic surgery of registration, you get this implant planning screen. Go to the CT scan image, sagittal, turn the image. You can see the pink points, what we used in registration, helps us to know that which is the lateral condyle. The normal condyle in a varus knee is lateral condyle. The second, just run the femur in coronal plane. You can see the pink points in the trochlea. This is matching the native trochlea. So implant planning in femur and as well as in tibia. Surface matching to get to the normal side is lateral side. This is very important, crucial in initial cases. You have to do only match the implant to the mapped bone.
in both femur as well as tibia. You can see this when I run the tibia in a proximal tibia. Yes. In a solid view, you can see you can see the picture of femur how it is fit to the native bone. You can run throughout all the images how the femur looks on the visual appearance. Next, laxity assessment. Here, you need to do the correctability of the knee. Minimal exposure, you see how much is correcting. Try to see the correctability in real time. You see this knee is getting corrected from 17 to single digit. So that's very important, okay? From 17 to single digit. The 17 degrees is not the virus. This is because of exposure. Yes, now use a tensioner on the medial joint slowly give a pressure run the range of motion so this graph shows it's tight medially the orange is medial the violet is lateral you see this i just do a valgus stress it doesn't open you understand so implant planning based on your surface matching based on your lag joint laxity this is the screen comes with a graph if you closely see the yellow colored box this knee is tight in extension you can see the extension both colors violet and the orange is minus so what i'm trying to do the working window the box which is tight you work with the femur above on it so i'm trying to reduce my extension gap so sagittal plane first you have to correct the sagittal plane next you need to see on the normal side where all the femur so in this case lateral is the normal so you have to see 9.5 is implant thickness try to match 9.5 on the other so now i'm trying to balance it the lateral side giving one degree virus to tibia or one degree virus to femur whichever balances i set my limits Two degree in coronal plane and five degree in sagittal plane so based on this i'm trying to balance this case you can see the working yellow window wherever it moves around i'm trying to rotate internal rotate two degree or external rotate slope i'm trying to increase the slope one degree or two degree. so this is very important so my aim is to balance the lateral compartment which is the normal compartment what is the medial compartment is not normal it's arthritic and hypertrophic because of bone grown so this we need to see the amount of bone grown if there is a tight orange on the medial side look for the medial osteophyte and medial over hypertrophy of the bone so this is what surgeon has to be removed so closely if you observe i'm just doing a fine tuning i'm ignoring the numbers i'm just fine tuning which out so this is what very important the image you see that when you do a downsizing the tibia there's a bone on the medial side this you have to keep in mind if i remove that bone i reduce the tightness there so this surgeon's intelligence so next you do the executing part checkpoint verifications very important once you get this in ffd you need to see the both the condyles to be a kissing sign so both has to be together that means you are removing the additional bone which is required to correct the deformity. Very important, use the burr, end on view. The burr should be perpendicular to the cut surface, not oblique. If you do that, burr cuts like a saw, exactly the surface. You can see, I need it need to be end on view, end on view. So you can see the cut surface, there is no dips, so very important. Keep an end on view, try to run exactly. So this is how the engineers have designed this bird to work. No point in keeping oblique and bird not working. So it has to be kept end on view. So distal bird, always to do a distal bird. And my way of doing is a distal bird first. Get the targeted holes keyhole in this you have to focus only on the target 
box nothing don't focus on anything else target box red is the target green is the bar use a visualization cut take the proximal tibia with a planar guide so this is very important just keep the cutting regular cutting guide with a planar and visualize the cut pin the cutting guide take out the 90% of the bone what you are supposed to be taken so this is the best way so initial surgeries first 50 cases this is the best method where you can yeah remove the bone in proximal tibia and focus on the zero number in all the things whereas well 0 point 0 point 0 point this is what important don't make the zero to one so try to aim is to get both varus valgus and slope zero so blue is the plant orange is the what you're going to cut once you do this execute the bone put your trials once you put your trials hold the leg in extension try to gently run the range of motion you can see less than 10 degrees accepted you are trying to the internal rotation is not about the components it's the limb okay you have to hold the limb within 5 degree internal rotation external rotation so turn it this is very important screen for me post op gap assessment holding the leg yes this is how we need it so this is what very important than anything else so your knee is balanced across the graph and that lateral opening at the 60 to 90 uh, 2 mm is much accepted this is what the normal knee behaves. Normal knee behaves. This gap opening is required, recommended. So this patient, you see this, the graph exactly opens on the 1 mm laxer side, above the graph. To start with it, we were the bars were below the graph, now here. So this is the final picture. So what we had a post-op, pre-op of 13 degree virus planned 1 degree virus, we achieved 2 degree virus. So this is what the graph it looks and important. You remember we left the Titan flexion 1.4. That can be replicated exactly in post-op graph also after putting the trial. Since you have planned laxity of 1.4, you can see this, the same in flexion after 90, you can see that 1.4 on the graph as well also. This is the accuracy of this robotic technology. Thank you.